we will be covering aphids, weevils, and worms, all key pests in California alfalfa. Summer worms, including western yellow striped and beet armyworms and alfalfa caterpillars, can be significant pests of alfalfa. Armyworms are larvae of moths, while alfalfa caterpillars are larvae of these pretty yellow and white butterflies that we see flying around alfalfa fields. While adults are harmless, the larvae can be highly damaging as they feed on plants, leaving behind tattered foliage that results in significant yield and quality losses. Monitor fields for summer worms with a sweep net by taking five sweeps in each of four different areas of the field and averaging the summer worm counts. Look for natural enemy activity by pulling apart caterpillars and checking for parasitoid wasp larvae, such as the one shown in the red circle. These larvae come from adult parasitoid wasps on the lower right that sting and lay in eggs inside caterpillar hosts. When there is an average of 10 or more worms per sweep and the population is increasing with no parasitized worms, it's time to control them. To control summer worms, one can cut fields to avoid worm damage or control them with insecticides. Be sure to choose insecticides with low impact to natural enemies, such as ladybugs, that control other pests like aphids. For alfalfa hay in California, some options include Corrigin or Prevathon, Intrepid, and the microbial insecticides such as the uh, BT uh, called uh, Zentari. So we're currently evaluating the use of drones for applying insecticides for summer worm control versus airplane sprays. Our data show that both drone and airplane applications provided equivalent control of summer worms. Additional trials will be conducted in 2021. Insecticide resistance is a serious concern, particularly in cases where there are few control options. In California, the main pest of alfalfa is the alfalfa weevil. Unfortunately, alfalfa weevil control is effectively limited to just chemical control. In recent years, growers in, in isolated regions in California and throughout the western United States have report, reported field control failures with pyrethroid insecticides. It is imperative that we monitor resistance levels in these regions so that we may monitor the spread of resistance and protect our few control options. As part of an ongoing project, I'm collecting weevils from reported resistant and susceptible populations throughout California and conducting dose response assays. I am primarily testing Lambda Cyhalothrin as it is commonly used for weevil control. I am also testing Indoxicarb as it is a newer chemistry with a different mode of action from pyrethroids. The weevils are placed 10 to a vial, tested at different doses, then assessed 24 hours later. By comparing dose with the number of weevils killed, I can generate a curve that shows how resistant that population is. Testing populations all across the state will help tailor resistance management advice to the needs of that region. Areas of concern identified are in the Palo Verde Valley, the Los Banos area, and in Scott Valley. Weevils in these regions have shown resistance to Lambda Cyhalothrin. So far, the other regions tested have still shown susceptibility. There is still more work to be done and more tests to be done with Indoxicarb. If you are interested in being a part of this project, please contact myself or Ian Grettenberger. Factoring natural enemies into a pest management plan is a key component of IPM and alfalfa. First, it lets us take advantage of natural pest control, reducing the need for insecticide applications. Plus, it helps prevent secondary pest outbreaks or the resurgence of the pests that we're actually trying to manage. This is especially true for aphids in alfalfa, including blue alfalfa aphid. Aphids reproduce very fast, which can lead to rapidly exploding populations. Luckily, aphids have many natural enemies, such as this damsel bug, lady beetle, and parasitoid in this aphid mummy. In this study, we present data from a 2015 aphid trial at the Intermountain Research and Extension Center. A variety of broad spectrum insecticides were tested, along with some newer, more selective materials. Aphids and natural enemies were assessed at 3, 7, and 14 days. Here we have percent controlled blue alfalfa aphid. We have a number of broad spectrum materials and some selective materials. After 3 days, we see a range of percent control. After 7 days, one of the broad spectrum materials has started to fall off. At 14 days, the selective materials are still getting very good control. While these broad spectrum materials are performing extremely poorly, actually off the scale shown here. So what's the story? 
It's with the natural enemies, like these lady beetle larvae. Lady beetle abundance is shown here. The broad spectrum materials nearly zeroed out the lady beetles through seven days. In contrast, the selected materials maintained natural enemies through 14 days. Numbers started to increase in some of the broad spectrum treatments and the untreated at 14 days, very likely because aphid populations were taking off and these plots were attractive. We are continuing to evaluate new selected materials, and some are or will likely soon be available on the market. Choosing a selected insecticide targeting aphids with minimal effects on natural enemies can help extend control and reduce applications. After the insecticide loses efficacy, preserved natural enemies are there to suppress any remaining aphids, a bioresidual effect. By preserving natural enemies, we can enhance the efficacy of the chemical alone. For more information, see the UCIPM page for alfalfa pest guidelines or get in touch with one of us.